was born on January 17, 1899, and died on January 25, 1947. He was a symbol of the collapse of law and order in the U.S. during the 1920s Prohibition era. His parents were Italian immigrants who raised him in Brooklyn, New York. The neighborhood he grew up in was a rough one, which led to Al joining gangs. The first gangs that he was a part of were the Brooklyn Rippers and 40 Thieves Juniors. He later became a part of the notorious Five Points Gang in Manhattan. When it came to school, Al, or Alphonse, was smart, but he dropped out of school in the sixth grade at age 14 and even beat a female teacher. Many people refer to Al Capone as Scarface, but they don't know how he got his scars. This is how it happened. One day, when Al was working at the Harvard Inn on Coney Island, he encountered Frank Galluccio and his sister Lena. Lena caught Al's eyes, and he began smiling and staring at her, which made her uncomfortable. Frank was about to tell him to stop, but Al leaned over and said, Honey, you got a fine ass, and I mean that as a compliment. Believe me. Then Frank goes crazy, demanding an apology, and seconds later, grabs out a pocket knife and slashes Capone three times. His scars consist of one oblique scar of four inches across the cheek and two inches in front of the left ear, one vertical scar of two and a half inches on his left jaw, and one oblique scar of two and a half inches, two inches under the left ear on his neck. Capone was ashamed of the scars, sometimes using powder to hide them, preferring to be photographed from the right side and saying the scars were the result of a war injury. But as king of the bootleggers during Prohibition, Scarface became a celebrity. The most famous gangster in the world. He was a cold-blooded criminal who killed hundreds of people. He paid off mayors, governors, and other elected officials in order to allow his operations to continue. He could even influence the elections by having members of his gang intimidate people into voting the way he wanted them to. Capone's reign of terror gave the city of Chicago a reputation as a gangster-infested place. In the late 1920s, President Herbert Hoover ordered his Secretary of the Treasury to find a way to put Capone behind bars, because up to this point, he had managed to escape jail time for any of his crimes. The government's decision to crack down on him just added to the problems he was having. His profits from bootlegging had started to decline as a result of the Great Depression and an end to Prohibition. After detailed investigations, U.S. Treasury agents were able to arrest Capone for failure to file an income tax return. Forced to defend himself while being tried on a different charge in Chicago, Capone's testimony regarding his taxes did not match previous statements he had made, so he was found guilty of tax fraud. In October 1931, he was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor, which he served in a prison in Atlanta, Georgia, and in prison on Alcatraz Island in California's San Francisco Bay. In 1939, he was paroled because of the ravages of neurosyphilis. He lived the last eight years of his delusional life at his estate in Florida. He was survived by his wife, Mary Josephine, and his son, Albert Francis. Al Capone is one of the most famous icons of the 1920s, and we will be hearing of his legacy for years to come.